Katie has been dramatic since as long as I can remember. <laughs> and I mean, in a great way. But it, it was never a surprise to me that she grew up wanting, you know, to do what she does today. She makes things special. She's got a real kind of joie de vivre, and when she's with you, you're the center of the universe, and she just makes you feel special, and that's a great quality that she has. Whatever Kate wanted to do, she was gonna do it. There just was no ifs or ands or buts about it. The Mulgrews are made up of a group of people who are very passionate about whatever role they take on. <laughs> a little bit uh, eccentric, I think, is a really good way to describe <laughs> the Mulgrew family. I actually remember the first time I saw Kate. First day of school, sitting at my desk, new kid comes in with her little grade school Catholic resurrection uniform and go-go boots. So that was obviously the first thing I noticed. She had, at the age of nine or whatever you are at that time, the most self-confident appearance of anyone I'd ever known. She wanted to be a veterinarian as a young girl. I was an avid frog hunter. Kate would kill them and dissect them. Then she heard that you could pit a frog, and that, you know, just fascinated her that you could stick a needle in the frog's head and it would still be alive but wouldn't move. And that sort of got the ball rolling on her veterinary career. The 60s, and we wanted to be in it. And we decided we were going to smoke pot. That's what everybody was doing. So, and Kate, this did happen. What did they call pot? Grass. We picked the biggest, fattest piece of grass we could find, and the damn thing wouldn't light. You know, they said grass. Why would we think anything else? We had no trouble smoking cigarettes that we stole, so it shouldn't have been any problem. Katie would put together these little plays for us to do, and it was, all, it was always a production, and, and, and she was always the director. And, uh, you know, how many kids do you know that know where they, what they want to be doing, where they want to go, you know, at a young age? I mean, that's pretty unusual. Very early, Katie announcing to the family that she was interested in becoming an actress, and my mother instructed her to go into the other room and get a dictionary. And my mother told her to open the dictionary to the word discipline. My mother said to Katie, once that definition has becomes meaningful to you, then you have a chance of being an actress. I can see her back there at Derby Grange. She had that modified version of Shakespeare and she's reading Shakespeare to me and I'm like 16 years old. Visiting her over there and she's reading this part back by their barn out there at Derby Grange. I thought, she's really committed to this whole thing. When I was about five, she had a carload of kids in this checker cab and she got pulled over by the cops for speeding. And by the time that the police officer had gotten out of his car and reached her window, she had fallen into a state of crying and weeping. Tears were already on her cheek, and she basically said to him, thank you for stopping me. Could you please provide an escort to the hospital because our grandmother's taking a, a turn for the worse. And the cop summarily got back to his car, drove us to the hospital. We had to park out front, and Katie made us all go inside the hospital. We had to wait in the lobby until the cop left. <laughs> and that's about my earliest memory of Kate. She was always, she could just turn it on. I remember the first day Kate walked into the radio station. She was fresh out of Wallard High School, 17 years old. But the thing I, I remember about her was she had that great diction and that great interpretive uh, read on everything she did. Well, we started doing old time radio plays, again, on the station at that time. I have her starring along with Tim Russell in a radio play I wrote called The Disc. Mr. Colt, I know I can trust you. You must help me get away from here. If my name gets associated with a murder, my modeling career will be finished. Will you please help me to slip out the side door? You can distract the police hey, and then wait I a minute, sister. For a gal who just lost her boyfriend, you've made a pretty quick recovery. Well, of course I feel badly for Jack, but, but he was just an acquaintance, not a lover or anything like that. I like older men anyway. How old are you, Mr. Cole? 
She told my father she wanted to go to school at NYU, and he gave her some money, but she never went to school. She got a job waiting tables. After about eight months, she said, kind of, I got good news and bad news. The bad news is that I'm not going to NYU, as everybody thinks, but that I'm taking acting courses from Stella Adler. And the good news is I landed the leading role in our town and a leading role on a soap opera. Well, my father's impression was, or rejoinder to that was, that sounds a lot like bad news, bad news. So he didn't get it. We knew she would be successful because she was driven. So when she moved to New York, there was no doubt that she would land work as an actress. I think her principal kind of influence was my mother. My mother basically encouraged her to do the thing that she loved. She gave her the confidence that she should be able to go out and achieve it. My life has been greatly influenced by the strong women, women in my life, and Katie's right at the top of that because she was encouraged by her mother. She played that role for a lot of people in her life, including myself. We're friends. I mean, working for 20 years, and we're friends. Very good friends. She's the kind of person who making you really welcome, really friendly. Her car is, is really strong women. Nothing can put it down. I mean, it's, it's just the kind of women that's really, I want to be like her. And so I feel really happy and lucky. So I, I, every day I pray, my God, and I say, thank God for this family I found in my life. Well, she's certainly the most famous contemporary actress to come out of Dubuque, and I think she's accomplished a, a great deal not only uh, in television and in motion pictures, but in her personal life with her dedication to the Alzheimer's Association, I think is uh, very inspiring. I think she's really a woman of principle and, and great character. I remember uh, I was with my mom and we were watching a movie. It was a Katherine Hepburn movie. I just remember seeing her on the screen and I was like, wow, mom, look at that lady. She acts just like Katie. <laughs> and mom said, uh, no, honey, <laughs> Katie acts just like Katherine Hepburn. She's had that dramatic type of uh, personality ever since she was little. She just made her path clear to herself and took that path. And no matter what the next obstacle was, she overcame that next obstacle and just kept moving forward. Kate really lived up to the challenge with flexibility and determination. I think it's amazing what you've done in your life. Dubuque remembers you very fondly with great memories, and we wish you all the best in the future. She's an exceptional woman. I needed to cry, I needed to talk. She was always there. Nothing like having a little girl for a friend. I love you, and I pray for her every day. And I wish to defend them the happiness that she deserves. I always thinking of her.